Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at an incredible set that I never thought I would own. Honestly, I would consider this set my White Whale, as it's such an old set that is so iconic in my opinion, and due to the price of it, I never thought I would acquire it. And so I gotta give a huge shout out to my friend Brian up in Wisconsin who found this on Facebook Marketplace and picked it up for me and shipped it down. And I'll tell you at the end how much I paid for it, but honestly I still cannot believe how good of a deal this was. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. As you can see, I am really struggling to fit this on my reviewing table here. So just bear with me, because this is definitely the biggest set I've reviewed so far, just because of that board at the bottom there. So this is set 725 Town Plan, released in the year 1961. So this set would have been available at the same time as the 717 Junior Constructor set, that I reviewed not too long ago. And don't worry, I do have the box for this one as well, although I wasn't able to fit it in with this shot here. So once we finish going over the actual set, we can take a look at the box as well. Now, original retail price on this set was $25, and according to Pierron, it is 690 pieces. Although, as always, it is incredibly hard to tell what is actually included with these sets, so that might not be accurate. So I'm just going to take you briefly around the town here to show you what we have. Um, we've got a large hotel building at the back. We've got what looks to be maybe a smaller hotel on the side here with some bushes and some bushes out front there. Uh, this one in the middle here looks to be a parking garage. And then we've got two small corner stores here. And then maybe what is supposed to be a toll booth over here and then another corner store. Over on the right here we have an office building. And at the back there, we have a gas station. And the entire thing is laid out on this cardboard baseboard here. And these little segments right here are not actually studs. They're just printed to look like such. So now we can do a close-up look of each of the buildings here. And just a quick note before we do that, finding this set at all is hard to do. And finding this set in this level of completion is even harder to do. So some of these accessories are either damaged or missing, like the light fixture, or the gas pumps, or some of the cars. And based on the inventory provided on Bricklink and Pieron, I believe I was missing 8 pieces, although again, that is pretty unsure, just because nobody really knows what was in this originally, and sometimes it varied. So I think the first thing we should look at is actually the non-LEGO looking elements. And this is the kind of stuff that I was calling out in the Junior Constructor set. Similar to the tree in that set, a lot of the times these pieces get broken or thrown out just because people don't know that they are Lego, as there's no marking on them. But these miniature trees, these tall pine trees, and then another set of miniature trees are all Lego pieces. And it's pretty interesting how flat they are, but I do have to admit they look pretty good when they're stood next to the correct scale houses in the background as well as the cars and such. So next up we have this little light fixture here, and as you can see it's not much of a light fixture anymore as the entire top segment here has been broken off, which is definitely not uncommon with this specific piece. That's a very fragile connection there, and these were often played with pretty rough back in the 60s. So again, you can see there's no LEGO marking, but this is indeed a LEGO piece. And our last bit of non-LEGO looking scenery here are these gas station pumps that go outside the Esso station. And I would say these are my personal favorite scenery pieces. They are supposed to have lamp posts on either side here, but again, those are very flimsy and would break off a lot. So I'm perfectly content at least having this much of the gas station pumps, because oftentimes, again, these are thrown out or missing completely. As you can see, the decals on the front are peeling off pretty significantly, and even more so on this side. And interestingly, this one does have the LEGO logo on the bottom, or rather the old style LEGO logo. And then we have one of the coolest things to be included with this, and something that again I cannot believe that I even have, given how rare these are, and especially in this condition as well. This is an HO scale official LEGO truck. Again, you look at this and you would not think that it's LEGO, it looks sort of like a matchbox car. Um, but if you turn it over to the bottom there, as you can see, LEGO and Mercedes. So I believe these were officially licensed vehicles as well, which is pretty cool. I love this olive green color as well. And it's even got the Mercedes logo on the front there. And one of the most common things you'll see with these trucks here is that the flatbed on the back is either completely missing or it's incredibly warped. So I really am not sure how this flatbed is in such perfect condition. I mean, it really isn't even warping at all. And any single one of these HO trucks, I would say, are at least worth $15. In this condition, you maybe could get closer to $30. 
because again, like everything that doesn't look like Lego in this, it is incredibly hard to find nowadays. Now this one right here is an imposter and is not actually a Lego VW bus, although it does look incredibly similar. And that's why I keep it in with the set when I display it. And it was included with the original lot. They had some other vehicles that were not Lego and I pulled those out because they weren't really to scale. But this one is roughly the size of what a Lego HO scale VW Beetle would be. And on the bottom there, you can see that it is an official licensed Volkswagen sedan. Although we do not see that Lego logo, which is what gives it away. Next up, we have this very nice, vibrant red HO scale fire truck. And again, this is in fantastic condition given the age. As always, I got to show you the Lego logo on the bottom. And this is another Mercedes car, as you can see by the front there. Now, this one is unfortunately missing the hose drum that would rest on the back here. And that's not surprising at all, as it literally just rests right on top of those things. So it would fall out very easily. But then surprisingly, it does have both segments of the ladder here, which is, again, something that you would not expect to see much like the flatbed on the other truck. These would get ripped off or warp or just break over time. So it can actually go up and it can rotate a full 360 degrees. And of course, this outer section here can extend. And finally, our last HO scale vehicle here is another Mercedes tow truck. As always, the Lego logo on the bottom and it says Mercedes. And again, it looks like we have the same cab mold. So this one right here is also in nice vibrant condition. Again, unfortunately, it is missing the small plastic hook that would go on the back, although it looks like somebody fashioned one out of like a coat hanger at some point, which is pretty cool. Nice bit of innovation there, and you can even tow your vehicle still with it. So yeah, that is a look at the three HO scale vehicles that come in the set. And if you ever see these in a Lego lot and you think they're Hot Wheels or something, do not take them out. Do not throw them out. Make sure you hold on to them. They are incredibly collectible and hard to find in good condition. Now, I'm pretty sure this set did include maybe a couple more. Like I said, I know it had the VW Beetle, the actual Lego one, not the one that I have. And there might have been just like another generic family station wagon or something. I can't remember. But either way, I am perfectly content having the three that I have here and the faux VW Beetle that works as well. All right, so now for the actual buildings here, we have these nicely shaped corner stores and they've got some doors and windows on the front there. And this one, unfortunately, is one of the only pieces that I'm missing for this main build of the set. And that is this one by six clear brick right here on the back. So I had to fill it in with some other white bricks. It doesn't look bad from the front, you can't really tell but it does bother me knowing that that's there. But the main problem that I have with this is that since these pieces are from the 60s, the molding on them is a little bit different than modern day pieces. And so I can't just go on BrickLink and blindly buy the right era pieces for this set. So unfortunately, it's something that I'm going to have to be able to inspect before I purchase it. And it's not often that people are listing, you know, old era specific bricks like that generic one by six. So if I can ever find one, I will replace it until then. I think these white bricks work just fine. Next up, we have our parking garage, and this is one of the larger builds in the set. As you can see, it does have a pretty significant amount of yellowing on the bricks, as most of the bricks in this set do. But that is okay, considering that this set is almost 60 years old now. So another cool thing that I wanted to point out are these 6x8 plates. They have the old style waffle underside, which is pretty interesting. They don't really hold clutch power too well. And honestly, a lot of these bricks don't hold their clutch power too well. As you can see, this whole thing's kind of like bending when I pick it up. And this is a pretty simplistic build, but I think it's cool enough and a nice centerpiece for this set. Moving over to the left side here, we have one of my favorite builds, and that is this cute little corner store. Just a nice 4x8 build right there. It's even got a window and a door. And then we have this uh, just 2x2x4 two by two by build, and I'm not quite sure what this is. I assume it's a phone booth just because it's got the window there, and that's about all it's big enough to possibly be. Moving over to the right side here, we've got this office building with parking garage on the side. And this over here, these bottom ones are actually supposed to be 1x2 clear bricks as well, uh, but I had to swap those out for these 1x2 white bricks because it just would not stay on if they were uh, all clear bricks. For whatever reason, the clear bricks pretty much lack any sort of clutch power at all. And then we have this neat little shape for the actual building itself. I like the usage of the indented windows there. And over on the back left here, we have one of the strangest buildings in this set. And I'm really not quite sure what this is supposed to be. Um, it's also pretty flimsy just because it's connected by the 
two by two clear bricks in the center there. And again, clear bricks don't have the best clutch power over the years. And as you can see, some of these white bricks are even warping too. So now we can look at the last two buildings and my personal two favorites. The first one here actually was originally released as a standalone set, I believe in the mid fifties. Although that version had a red stripe along these plates here. But this is a cute little SO service station slash gas station. And on the diagram, it tells you to put these gas pumps right outside here. And I think that that just looks adorable and I love it. <laughs> so again, we have a door here and then these nice curved windows that go all the way around. And then we even have this printed brick that says SO service right at the top. And that is still in great condition. The print is fully there, which is sometimes rare to see. We've also got windows all the way around the backside, and this one's a little chewed up at some point, but oh well, at least it's there. But the coolest part about this set is that it's actually got a play feature built in, and that is this garage door here. So you just press down on the floor here, and the counterweights on the inside allow that to pop up, and it's actually got a little track right there where you can fit the HO scale cars. So to show how this feature works, we're actually going to have to set it down on the ground here. So first you take your HO scale car, and push it all the way to the back there and then you close the garage door and make sure it snaps shut and then the ramp on the inside is actually slanted a little bit downwards so when you press this right here and the door pops open it actually just comes rolling out like that and i think that's really neat i love the way that the uh, door opens on its own and then it it launches him out on its own just a really imaginative play feature all the way from the 60s, and it doesn't use any sort of springs or other machinery. It's literally just the plastic bricks, and I love that. And finally, for the largest building in the set and our grand centerpiece, we have the hotel. So this build right here is over 26 bricks tall and towers above all the rest. And the build techniques on this are fantastic. I love the shaping of it. As you can see at the bottom here, we've got the indented double doors, and then you've got these nice wraparound windows that go on either side. And that also fits nicely with the curved edges that we have on both the right and the left side here. You've even got doors on either side as well. So we've also got multiple tiers here. You've got the front entryway level, and then you've even got this 1x6 printed hotel brick. It's got these nice square pillars on the side that even go up to the top there and stick out the top and I think that looks like a good bit of decoration. Then you've got this large monolith section here with alternating windows on each level. Again perfect for a hotel build and it gradually tapers off at the top. This is just a really fantastic build with great shaping especially for the time. So that is all the buildings that it shows in the traditional layout, but we are nowhere close to done. Next up we have the empty board here, so I can give you a better look at it without all the buildings in the way. So a lot of cool streets that are perfect scale for the HO cars. There is the Lego system by Samsonite logo, and that goes underneath the gas station. Unfortunately there is a little bit of tearing on the ground over there. But again, nothing too bad, and given the age of this, it's actually in very nice condition. So another cool thing is that this board actually folds in half, as I'm sure you could tell by the seam running down the middle. And on this side right here is where we can actually see the layout of the town plan. So as you can see, it looks like I'm missing an SO sign for the gas station back there. There you can see the light fixture and the petrol pumps as they are supposed to look. There's a VW bug that I'm missing, and then you have the SO tanker that I'm also missing. Actually, it looks like there's two VW bugs. And the trees are pretty different in their illustration, although sometimes that differed by set. So I really can't be sure that it actually included these really tall ones over in the corner here, or even these just standard trees and not the tall pine trees and the bushes like I have on mine. Either way, it looks fantastic, and I would say that mine is very close to that. Then at the bottom here, we just have a couple more ideas for builds you can make with the pieces in the set. And those look pretty neat as well, in my opinion. So flipping it over, we can see the box art on the other side. Not too much to say about this one, but it looks pretty cool. And so while what is on the board is considered the main build of the set, it's actually not even close to using up all the pieces. And these right here are the extras that are left in the box. So we've got some white 2x3s, some white 2x4s. We've got some of the curved clear windows and some other various pieces. And we've got a bunch of white 1x1s and the macaroni pieces. So another thing I forgot to talk about for this set is the plastic type used for the bricks. And as I mentioned in my review of the 717 Constructor set, 
Up until 1962, they used cellulose acetate, or CA, which is the older, shinier type of plastic, although it is more prone to warping. And so with both that set and this set coming out in 1961, uh, it's definitely not a reach to think that these sets would have been around on shelves through that transition in 1962. So the Junior Constructor set is also this acetate, which tells me that it is an earlier run of that set. This one right here has all ABS plastic bricks, which tells me that it was purchased sometime after 1962. We actually saw a more recent example of this with the 2003 Star Destroyer that was launched in 2003 and was on shelves long enough to actually transition from old light gray to new light gray. So just another interesting bit of history, and that helps us to date this version of the set. All right, so back to the other pieces. We've got another bag of white 2x2s, a bag of white 2x10s, and then for our red pieces, we've got some 2x4s and 2x2s, and we've got a bag of red 2x8s and 2x10s. So we've got a bag of a bunch of different types of windows. And then lastly here, we've got one of these 10x20 base plates, and this is the same type that we saw in the Junior Constructor set. And since I didn't show you there, this is what the bottom of one of those looks like. So that is all the bricks in the town plan set that I was able to find in this lot. And as promised, here we have the box. Again, this is pretty roughed up, but it is still in better condition than a lot of the ones that I've seen online. You even got some tape on the corner here. Now the size of this box is the same length and width as the Junior Constructor set, but on the side here it's actually a little bit thicker. And there's not really much on the sides at all here. Yeah, it's just the same thing on every end. And the back is also just plain white. I don't think I showed the back of the Junior Constructor set, but it is the same, just plain white cardboard. And this one's definitely got some water damage and some pretty roughed up edges there. And then the inside of the lid has the same exact image that we saw on the actual board for the set. So nothing new there either. And unfortunately the inside of the box is empty. It does not have the dividing segments that the Junior Constructor box had, although it is supposed to. They were just probably thrown out by the previous owner, but that is okay. I can still store the bricks in here well enough. So there you have it, the incredibly cool vintage town plan set from 1961. And adjusted for inflation, the set would have retailed for $218.36. So not a big surprise to me that there's not a lot of these left in the world. Considering LEGO was still pretty small at the time and just getting their bearings in America especially, coupled with a very high price for the time, I imagine not a lot of families were able to get this set. Now, current use prices are honestly impossible to pinpoint for this set. There's not been enough sold on Bricklink to have a price average, and I think currently there's only two listed, and they're at like 500 something dollars for the cheapest one. And if you find this on eBay, it's almost always going to be with no box or with an incredibly roughed up board or maybe like 50 or some pieces, nowhere close to being complete. But I would estimate that a complete one would probably start around the $400 mark for the low end, especially considering condition of all those non-LEGO looking elements like the trees and the gas station pumps and the light fixture and all that. And I could easily see a, you know, mint condition complete one with box and cars and all the extra pieces and everything in very good condition going for, I would say, 800 ish dollars. So yeah, as you can see, not something that I would really be wanting to pay for, given that it's mostly just basic bricks. However, I guess I gotta tell you now, the price that I paid for this, it was a whopping $15. Yes, that is not a joke. My friend saw this on Marketplace, like I said, and he sent me some pictures of the box and the inside of it, and it really was just a huge pile of pieces, but I saw the HO scale cars, and I said, yes, dude, please get that for me if it's still available. I will pay for shipping. So I actually ended up paying like $40 just for shipping, so I ended up paying almost three times for shipping than I did for the actual set, which is just crazy, but it was completely worth it seeing the completeness and condition of everything here. But folks, we are actually not done yet because there was so much more included in the box. So let me get all that now. So we'll start with the worst stuff first, and that would be this weird off-brand Lego house set. It actually even has the instructions here, and they are just labeled with C03. And opening them up, we can see it's really more of just a one-page pamphlet. And at the bottom here, it says Coco Bricks, printed in Korea. So that is the name of the brand, and I'm not sure if it's a Korean brand or if that's just where the instructions were printed. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a year on this, as there's none printed on the instructions, and I couldn't find one online either. 
Although my initial guess would be somewhere in the 70s or 80s, as the condition of this set and instructions is a lot better than the other LEGO sets that were in the slot, which ranged from 56 to 65. So I imagine they got this one significantly after those. So it's pretty simplistic. We've got what looks to be a female figure here sitting on a lawnmower or something. And this figure, interestingly, has posable knees, which I had never seen something that looked like this before. And when you take her hair off, there's just a gaping hole in her head, which is pretty funny. Then the actual house is pretty odd as well. You've got this strange shaped tree. You've got a mailbox out front, some flowers. Uh, you've got a little shed to store the lawnmower. Then you've got a door to the inside. There's nothing inside there. And you've also got a window on the second floor. And there's nothing on the second floor either. Those are really tough to open. It's got a red roof on the very top and a blue roof on this section here. For whatever reason, the mailbox here does not want to stay on. And it was surprisingly 100% complete apart from just this little window segment here. So that shutter is the only thing that's missing. So pretty odd, not Lego, but it was in the lot and I figured I might as well show it off since it was complete, almost complete. So continuing with the worst stuff, we've got these incredibly destroyed uh, advertisement pages. Unfortunately, I couldn't really lay them out in any sensible way, but it looks like we've got some similar stuff to what we saw in the Junior Constructor set. This one is labeled as seven, but I actually don't remember any people looking like that. This one has some trains on it and some houses over there. So I wish I knew what exactly these came from. Now this little segment is neat. I didn't see this before and I would love to see the full image. So if you can find it, please leave a comment down below because I would love to see what this is from. But we've got a full color picture of what looks to be a giant Lego town. I can see some pretty large buildings in the back there. And you flip it over and you can see some of the parts packs they offered at the time. So you can get uh, lo two large base plates, sorry, for 50 cents, uh, assorted roof bricks for 50 cents, these wheels and couplings for 75 cents, so just really cool to see that kind of stuff. And here we've got some various bags of extra pieces. This is actually one of those garage bases with the ramps that we saw in the town plan. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the garage door counterweight to go with that, so I wasn't able to build anything out of it, but it is cool to have an extra. Then we've got some various windows and a couple plates and bricks in there. And lastly, we've got some red ABS bricks here. Just general 2x4s and some macaroni bricks. And this right here is just some weird uh, Batman-style mansion abomination that I made with all the extra pieces that I could find, apart from the ones you just saw, of course. So I believe these are all red cellulose acetate bricks. I'm not quite sure on the white ones. Again, they can be harder to tell. But we've got two of these 10 by 20 base plates in red this time, which is pretty cool. I had never had those before. We've got a lot of the waffle underside plates as well. And a bunch more windows and just basic bricks. And even some roof tiles at the top with the sloping. So yeah, a lot of extra pieces. I'm not quite sure how many that was, but I would imagine somewhere close to at least 200. Okay, so now here are the other cool sets that were included. This right here is set 001. Gears by Samsonite and this set was actually 100% complete. It had all the gears, all the tires, all the cool stuff like that and these are some really strange looking old gears but pretty cool also. It's also got these old style 4x4 turntables which I had never seen before. Those are pretty neat and these old wheels with the metal pins that we saw in the 105 vintage set and those connect the same way just by doing that. They work pretty well, although the rubber around the tires here is mostly degraded, so can't really be too rough with these, but still pretty neat that it had the entire set. Now this set came out in 1965 and originally retailed for $4.95 and had 43 pieces. Adjusted for inflation, that would be $41.29, so pretty expensive for what is a relatively small bag, all things considered, of gears. But I had never owned any of these Samsonite gears, so I was very excited to see them in the box and even more excited to see that the set was 100% complete. So our next set that was included in the lot is another Basics Bricks set called the Wheel Toy, and this is set number 605. It originally retailed for $5 and has 190 pieces. Mine is missing 21 pieces according to Bricklink, but that's okay. It came out in the year 1963, and adjusted for inflation, it would have retailed for $42.81 in current prices. 
So pretty much the same price as the gear set. And honestly, I think this seems more engaging than just a couple of gears. So this is a pretty rudimentary train build that I did with the pieces. It doesn't hold together all that well, but did my best. It's even got some printed Lego bricks here. Uh, mine's missing a couple of those. And then with the leftover pieces, I tried to come up with some sort of train station. Doesn't look too great, but didn't really have much to work with. Okay, finally, I promise we are to the last set here, and this is set 700 gift package. And this is actually the oldest Lego set I own now, since according to Bricklink or Pieron, it was released somewhere between 1956 or 1958. So as expected, this is all cellulose acetate bricks. Now I couldn't even find an original retail price for this set, but according to Bricklink, it is 246 pieces and mine is missing 22 of those. And so out of these pieces, I just decided to try to build some sort of a hotel thing. So yeah, that is the incredible deal of a lifetime. Not only did I get set 725 town plan, but I also got three other sets from a similar era and one that's even significantly older with this one here, all for $15. And of course I can never stop thanking my friend Brian for finding this for me and shipping it down. It was an incredible thing for him to do. And I'm forever grateful because I hugely appreciate this old type of Lego sets. And just being able to have this much of Lego history in one box was really, really cool to see. So I know this was a long one and probably significantly longer than it should have been because I really kind of reviewed four sets plus some extras here. And I think all told it was upwards of like 1,100 pieces that were in the box. I didn't keep an exact count, but it was somewhere close to that. So pretty insane. I don't think I'm ever going to find a deal that good ever again. Anyways, everybody, I hope you really enjoyed this. I know I did. I am forever excited to own this set specifically. And please let me know what you think about this set, whether you even knew about it or not. Anyways, as always, thank you for watching.